Okay, so this video is just an introduction to factoring. Uh, this is what we did the first day when we started talking about module 11. Uh, so factoring is basically breaking things down into pieces that can be multiplied together. Those are your factors. So we can imagine something like 15x to the fourth. There are a lot of different ways we could factor this monomial term. Uh, we could rewrite it as 5x squared times 3x squared. It's now factored. It has two factors multiplied together. Uh, we could also break it up as 5x cubed times 3x. We could break it up as 15x times uh, x to the third, right? Lots of different ways. There's a ton of different ways that we could break up this 15x to the fourth. Uh, so normally, we would want to factor a polynomial with more than one term. Uh, doing this monomial is a little bit silly, um, though we need to have this flexibility of realizing all these different ways that we can write 15x to the fourth if we're going to do um, factoring of a polynomial or something with more terms. So let's just look at an example. So if we wanted to factor, let's use our 15x to the fourth we just got familiar with, uh, and let's say plus, I don't know, I'm going to make something up. Let's do 25 uh, x squared. So if we wanted to factor this, um, what our goal is usually is to pull out the greatest common factor. So um, one way we can do this is by using prime factorizations to figure out what the greatest common factor is. And this is what I did in class. So 15x to the fourth, well 15, we can do this off to the side, Ooh. 15 breaks down into 3 and 5, doesn't get any better than that, 3 and 5 are both prime. So we can rewrite 15 as 3 times 5, and we can write x to the fourth as x multiplied together 4 times. And the 25x squared, well, this is could be rewritten as 5 times 5 times x times x. So when you're trying to find your greatest common factor, um, it's going to basically be any common factors from these prime factorizations. So as we're looking at these prime factorizations, we can see uh, these two um, terms have 5 in common. They have two x's in common. So our GCF of these two terms is 5 times x times x, or 5x squared. And essentially what this is telling us is that if we wanted to, we could rewrite both of these terms, instead of in their prime factorization, uh, using this GCF, and then whatever else there needed to be in order to get um, our original out. So in this case, you can kind of figure this out from what is left over after we pull out that GCF. Uh, we could break up 15x to the fourth power as 5x squared times 3x squared. This is actually our first factorization we sort of just played around with uh, when we were factoring the monomial. And the other term can also be written with a factor of 5x squared, uh, but the leftover piece or the other piece that we would need is times a 5. So once we realize that, we can basically rewrite our original piece, this 15x to the fourth plus 25x squared. If we wanted to move really slowly with this, we could think of this as being 5x squared times 3x squared. And then we're adding that to our 5x squared again times 5. Right? All we have done is basically taken this and rewritten it in a slightly uglier version. And now we can undistribute, right? That's what factoring is, is basically taking and doing the opposite of distribution. So since these both have that 5x squared in common, this GCF that we found, we could go ahead, pull that out in front, and rewrite this as a distribution across some parentheses. And if you ever want to check your work on any of these questions, the simplest thing to do is just distribute back out double check that if I do this, I get 15x to the fourth plus 25x squared, which is what I started with. So I feel good and I can box this up as my final factored answer. So that's a little bit of a preview of some of the factoring stuff. 
Um, especially what we're doing now is uh, factoring out a GCF. So I'm going to give us a couple more examples since we have a little bit of time uh, to practice on this and see uh, if we like or we get we get what's going on. So here's an example for you guys to try. We'll do 8 a to the fifth plus 12 a to the third minus 6 a squared. So take a second, pause the video, uh, figure out what your GCF is. Okay, I don't know why I always pause. I can't stop myself. Uh, so if we wanted to do this, uh, we may want to do, especially if you're getting used to this at the beginning, those prime factorizations that helped us so much before. Uh, you'll note that when I'm writing out my prime factorizations here, I'm not going to write the negative on the 6a squared. I'm just going to remember that this pattern here of positive term, positive term, negative term when I go to finish this up. So 8 can be rewritten as 2 times 2 times 2. Again, if you don't know that immediately, you just do your little factor tree. Write that little uh, factor tree. And we can rewrite all those lovely a's in a row. 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And then you have your 3 a's. And then 6 is 2 times 3. And we've got a squared, so 2 a's. So now we are looking for what is in common, right? So as we look for what's in common, we see they all have a 2 in common. So if we're starting to build our GCF, we know our GCF has a factor of 2 in it. Unfortunately, when we look at the next numbers, we have a 2, 2, and a 3. So that's not going to work. We don't have another 2 in this bottom, uh, bottom term, and we don't have a 3 in the top term. So this is all we got for the numbers. Um, for the variables, it looks like we have a's, a's again, but only two a's. So there's my GCF, 2a squared. Now you don't actually need to do this whole giant prime factorization every single time. Eventually you'll get, you'll get better at this, especially recognizing the patterns, but numbers can only ever match up with numbers. Variables can only ever match up with variables. So we can kind of look at each number of our original polynomial separately. Um, and you're just asking yourself, what is the biggest number that divides into 8, 12, and 6? Um, this can be a little bit of a place where we can make mistakes if we're wrong, um, but that is what you'll be doing. You go, okay, they're all divisible. I have a 2. There's my GCF of 2. And if I have 5 A's, 3 A's, and 2 A's, how many A's can I realistically pull out here or divide out? Um, and you've got two is kind of your limiting factor. So um, you want the biggest number, right, that divides into all coefficients. Evenly. And then your power on any variable is going to be the smallest power in any one term. So you can see here, um, power is 5, 3, and 2. The smallest power is 2, and that what's, what, that's what comes down. Um, if we had, say, a b right here, since there are no b's in the other two terms, your smallest power would be 0. You shouldn't have a b there. So let's go ahead. Oh, no, I didn't mean to delete that. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, finish up this problem. So now that we have our GCF, uh, we can basically just to buy that out. We've covered division of polynomials, dividing a polynomial by a monomial, and that's essentially what we're doing. So we know that we want to pull out this 2a squared, right? I'm going to just write my answer here. So we need to figure out what's left. A nice thing to do is to give yourself, okay, we had something plus something minus something. We're going to have the same shape when we're factoring out a GCF. So something plus something minus something else. We need that same shape because once we distribute this back out to check, we got to make sure we have all of the same signs and as many terms as we originally had. So what's next? Okay, here's where you can either be thinking about your distribution or you can kind of be doing division. So what needs to come happens here is that we know whatever happens when we distribute here is supposed to equal 8a to the fifth, right? 
So I think, okay, I have two, I need eight. What do I need to multiply by? Four. Okay, I have a squared, I need a to the fifth. What do I need to multiply by? Another option, instead of doing this as like, what do I need to multiply by? That's how I like to think of it because then I'm basically checking my work at the same time. But an alternative is we basically kind of want to divide out this 2a squared. So you can almost think of this as just doing 2a squared and then following the division rules that we did in division of monomials. Uh, so we got 4a to the 5 minus 2, which is 4a to the 3rd. Right. So similar way to get there. Uh, it's just doing division instead of saying, what would I need to multiply by? Uh, there are two sides of the same coin. So we move to the next one. What And, and you, if you have this, you can actually just look at what's left over. There's 2 times 2, which is 4, 3 a's, which is 8 cubed. Um, or we could keep going. Okay, so we need 12 a cubed, which means I need to multiply by 6, and I need to multiply by a. And the last one, I need my 2 to become a 6, so I need to multiply by 3. A squared is already a squared, so I don't need to modify the a's. Uh, notice here, too, that we have the same patterns that we're used to seeing. Uh, if we look at our original, 5 went to 3, went to 2 in terms of our exponents, so there was a change of 2 and a change of 1 as we kind of went from exponent to exponent. We have the same thing here, change of 2 because this exponent's an invisible 1, and then we have another step down where we go to an invisible exponent of 0 on our x in the last term. So those patterns should hold true. Same thing with our signs. So always be looking for patterns, sort of double check your work. Um, okay, I guess I'll give us one quick last question. So that way uh, you guys have one more to test yourselves. We got a little bit more time. So if you want to do one more, let's do, I don't know, I'm just going to make one up. Let's do 12a to the fifth, b to the seventh, minus 6 a cubed b to the fourth. All right, so first thing we need to decide is our GCF. This time I don't want to write out my prime factorization, though I could, um, especially if you're, you're moving slow. Instead, we're going to try to do this one uh, easier. So what number divides into 12 and 6? Well, if I made a mistake here and went, ooh, 3, here's what's going to happen. So let's let's do this one wrong to start. 3 uh, is not the greatest common factor. We could actually pull out a 6, but if we're not writing out the whole prime factorization, we can make these sorts of mistakes. Uh, the smallest exponent on A is a cube, and the smallest exponent on B is a fourth. So this is our almost perfect uh, greatest common factor. Not perfect because we know the 3 should be a 6. But what happens if we make this mistake? Well, as we're figuring out what the factors inside of our binomial pieces, right, because this has two terms. Uh, one mistake we can make is going, okay, 4, I need an a squared and b to the third. And on the other one, looks like I just needed 2. We should hopefully recognize here that we made a mistake because our two terms of this binomial, they still have a common factor. This means that we failed. We did not pull out the greatest common factor. Now, we could salvage things. You don't have to cross out our work and start over. We could say, okay, well, let me just look at this thing. Oh, 4 and 2, they clearly have a 2 in common. So let me refactor this bad boy. That would be go at 2a squared b. And, oh, I need that placeholder of a 1. So that way, if I were to factor this or distribute this back out, it would equal what was above. And I still need to bring down this 3a cubed b to the fourth. And then you can kind of go ahead and simplify up this monomial out in front. This is 6a cubed b to the fourth times 2a squared b minus 1. And this is your final answer. And this is what you would have gotten had we started correctly realizing that the greatest common factor between 12 and 6 is actually 6. But this is how you spot if you make that mistake. And again, you won't make that mistake if you actually write out the prime factorization, but it takes a lot of time. So hopefully that helps with just factoring out a GCF. Uh, in the next video, we will cover factoring by grouping.